Hello everybody, back here again for another vlog a day. And today is Wednesday the 11th and today was a lovely, beautiful day to be alive. Got up this morning um, fairly slowly actually. Stayed in bed a little longer than normal. Um, my lovely bride got up and got her moving around a little bit and stuff and then I asked her to look the dogs out for me so I kind of stay there, stay in bed for a few more minutes, which worked out. She was kind of, she got the dogs out and whatnot and had to ask me a couple questions about the dogs. So it wasn't like I was like sleeping hard, but I was able to stay in bed a bit longer than normal because normally I'm up and moving the moment I hear the dogs moving around. So it was kind of nice to kind of lay around there and kind of relax a little bit as the morning got started. So she headed off to work. I got up, got the dogs. Um, rest their care done, had to feed them and all that good fun stuff that's required. Um, got a few things done around, hung outside with them for a little while, played in the yard with them for a bit. Um, they were just playing and wrestling and stuff. And I kind of felt a little bad for them because of the fact they were, there's the only two left besides my Great Dane. And the St. Bernard especially is really feeling depressed, I think, because he's had puppies here the whole time to play with and rough house and really struggle with and fight and play and chase. And so he's been having to beat up the bulldog a lot more, which is a little unfortunate because the bulldog is just, he's kind of old and bulldogs don't have a lot of stamina for heavy play so they were having themselves a lot of fun though they were playing some the bulldog lay up on the chair next to me and chill out while the St. Bernard was like come on I want to play with more people it was kind of a little bit on the sad side but it is what it is so got a few things done went out um got myself another load of stuff for my father-in-law from the storage unit from there um was it had to go walk some dogs today as well so i got the rv dogs walked got them taken care of um, that walk went just fine it's just it's usually pretty uneventful for the most part but it just takes a lot of time out of your way because it's 15 20 minutes down there whatever and a half an hour walk and then another 15 20 minutes back it adds up pretty quick and then whatever other time is involved with getting them leashed up and all that kind of stuff so i give them a full you know full walk so i'm actually spending more time than i should but i feel bad for them client so it's a it's kind of nice so i don't have to be at an exact time frame i would like show up there right at two so basically hang hang between like i'd say really probably as early as 12 30 but i'd say from 1 to 2 30 i'm good as long as i get there by then i'm pretty well set in the process so try and make sure i give the dogs a little extra walking time that way they stay happy with my work and all that good fun stuff as well and this week we're letting the pups stay out of the crate when i leave which is so far, I believe, going well. He's burning off the extra energy and then not tearing up the trailer, which is definitely, so far, I think, still going good. Um, she's having me let him, leave him out all three days so far. So that's been a good thing. So I went ahead, uh, left there, headed back up. Actually, we had a couple of keys made. Got that taken care of. I've been asking my wife to give me keys because somehow or another in the process of giving all the keys to the house, I don't have a deadbolt key to my house. So I can't even get my house if I get locked out. And I've asked her numerous times to give me her keys so I can go make a copy of it. And doesn't do it, doesn't do it. Finally, I was like, you got just, you have to give me your key right now. I don't give a shit, just give me a key. Well, I was gonna do it, I was gonna, I'm like, no, no, just hand me your key. I'm not asking you to make one. I'm just asking you to hand me the key. So she went and checked, made sure it's the right one, gave me the key. So I stopped by a little hardware store there, ended up buying um, a couple magnetic keys. They're different colored as well. My wife wanted a different color key or something to make it stand out so she can find it compared to that, the house keys across the street and so on and so forth. So she's gotten to me house keys now and because each house has two separate keys and then, which I did intentionally, even the same door has two separate keys. That way, if for some reason I ever give somebody a key to my house, say I gotta do maintenance on the house or something, I can get them a deadbolt key only with the bottom lock unlocked. They come in and out and then I lock the bottom lock again and they can't get in the rest of my house. So even if somebody would make a second copy of the deadbolt key, the bottom lock's the one's always locked. And that key also fits at our door in the house. So it's not a big deal there, but yeah, it is what it is. So, and it worked out pretty well in that process. Part of the problem is though, I could have been locked out of my own house because the deadbolt's locked. I can't get in the backyard because the gate's locked from the outside or inside as well too. So I had to like climb my fence to get into my house, which is a good thing for security, but it would suck because they were locked out. But now I have my keys, um, put them in certain spots, my keychain, so I'd know which one to make extras of. And then somehow when I got there, I was, well, I was waiting for him to figure out um, which key we we're using. I mixed up my keys in my hands playing with them and I didn't know which one was which one. So I didn't make as many copies as I wanted to. 
because I wasn't certain. I didn't want to make too many of the ones. I have extras at the regular door. I got a bunch of doors. Like there's like five doors in the house that have the same key. So I have tons of those. It's just a deadbolt one. I only have the couple of. So I wanted extra ones to put in my uh, secured lockbox. So I'm going to mount on the outside of the house. That way in case I'm ever out on a run or who knows, lose my keys kayaking or God knows what, I'll still be able to get in my house. So I want to get that mounted. I have that in all my houses. So I have something I've always done. That way I don't have to worry about carrying keys with me while I'm out and running or whatever. Rocking the motorcycle and have separate car keys or house keys on the motorcycle and that kind of thing. So, but I couldn't do that. So I got just one of each made and I made one of the blue ones for her, or one of each of the blue. That way, whichever one it was, she could have and the one I would have, which her blue one ended up being the deadbolt, which worked out well, which is what she wanted. And then I've got a new blue house key for the main door and then a regular house key for the deadbolt, which is fine. But ironically, that's what she'd bought me when I moved down here like seven years ago. She went and had a key made for the other house. And when she gave me the key, she had one. It was like a blue key that said Florida on it. So kind of tied into the same blue. She likes blue, obviously why it went that way. But it was kind of, I still have that same key all this time. Well, after I got done with the walk the dog, stopped there, got the key made, headed back out, grabbed another load of stuff for the house and I'm kind of that weird thing like there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know where it's supposed to go when it gets to, back to the house from the storage unit so I'm kind of slowing down now I've got all the major furniture pieces the beds the chairs the tables all that kind of stuff the dressers these coffee tables and coffee tables and coffee tables and end tables I got all that stuff now I got a couple of them left but they'll be probably tomorrow I'll have them done and I think I'm going to basically wait on the rest of it to get this stuff organized somewhat so we don't just end up the giant pile. It's going to cost another few hundred bucks for the next month, but let them know that, hey, you guys need to start unpacking this. You need to get this stuff put away and find out where it is because there's just a bunch of this stuff. They're very sentimental, collectible people. They hold on to crap that they'll never look at again. Like, and I think about a lot of stuff. It's been a year and a half where he hasn't, he hasn't seen or touched or even thought about this stuff, but yet paid $4,000 to store it, you know, so yeah, it's not my thing, but it is what it is. So yeah, we're gonna get that stuff all moved over. Um, just kind of is what it is there. Got back to the house, had myself a nice little, got my run in, got my shower, had myself a little leftover dinner. Um, ended up, mom threw the vegetables, potatoes, and um, the carrots and the onion in the oven, roast them up a little bit, soften them up because they were undercooked from yesterday. Had a nice little meal, watched a little bit of TV, headed outside to play with the dogs, um, hung out there, had myself a nice little cigar. I was heading back in, so I was taking that light off, a little flashy light for the dogs. I noticed the bulldog had like, it was like wet, it was like on his neck. I was like, what the hell? Started looking and I assume when the St. Bernard and him were playing, he bit on the um, dog tag and tried to straighten it out, like tried to pull it off and it stuck the wire, the wire stuck way out. And it's a real super heavy duty, super strong wire, which I couldn't imagine the dog bent that. It was so tough. I couldn't get it back into a circle, but it had rubbed raw under the dog's neck, unfortunately. So I was like, shit, it was pretty late. And I didn't want to hit up the owner because right then, because part of it is if I tell him right now, then I don't hear back from him for an hour or two, depending on the time zone they're in, then it's gonna suck because they're gonna ask questions. I'm not able to answer the phone because the phone's on do not disturb. Then when we woke up at two in the morning, I'm trying to answer questions. They're scared and freaked out about it. So I washed it off real good and got it all cleaned up and that. And it's just raw. It's just, it's not, there's no major cuts or nothing. It's not like bleeding or face or nothing. It's just that kind of that white or almost clear leakage that wounds get that it just, it sucks. So I went ahead and treated it with a couple things and we left the collar off and that. I reached out, I figure I'll reach out in the morning and let him know how it's going. Also, I'll know a lot more in the morning about how it's doing. But so the dog's collar's off. Um, which I don't like because the dog would ever get out because it's in a different house stuff. Neighborhood doesn't know. I like having collars on so I can have tags to, so I can find them. If somebody ever finds the dog, they'll be able to get it back to me kind of thing. So, but I'll just have to watch it extra close, make sure, which I, I'm never, I mean, I'm always super careful with that kind of stuff anyway. But I like having the collar on, even like simple things if you need to get them to go outside or stuff and let's see, kind of grab their collar to kind of help direct them. And worst case scenario, if the dogs ever get, uh, I mean, they're roommates, they live in the same house, but they get to fighting real hard or get to playing too much. And you can reach down and grab a collar, pull out easier and control the dog a lot quicker than you can without a collar. So I see people all the time like going to like, dog parks and stuff and like your dog getting aggressive. There's no collar to get a hold of. What the hell, like my neighbor has a Rottweiler that gets out constantly and there's no collar to get a hold of. It's so, like, 
I came and hook up a leash to hook this dog up to bring it back home to you because you don't have a damn collar on your damn dog. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. But so that's never good. But like I said, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm worried about going to the vet with him, nothing. Like I said, I'll send him a text in the morning and let him know what's going on, send him some pictures and whatnot, and then get their input. So, anyway, that's all I got for right now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe, wonderful day. Thanks for watching.